The diaphragms are frozen. The energy center cannot flow through. But if the energy center is frozen, then the, diaphragm, the diaphragms have no option. So we have to work and balance back and forth between what is the bracing that is holding the energy locked in, and then if we encourage and give presence to the organ centers and that energy begins to flow, then the diaphragms begin to let go. So it's, it's a delicate balance of titrating between the energy centers and the diaphragmatic gates. Every diaphragm, there's a center. Here's an energy center held by the respiratory diaphragm, heart center held back by the thoracic inlet, the throat center held in between the cranial base and thoracic inlet, and then ears and eyes are held in together be between the cranial base tentorium, and then mind is held in between tentorium and that dome. So we're kind of layered, energy center, diaphragm, diaphragmatic gate, energy center, diaphragmatic gate. Eighty percent of the information that moves along this polyvagal nerve goes up, so it's afferent, it goes up from the body to the brain. So actually, if we want to calm the brain, it makes sense to start where the signals are. So by starting to work with the organs, we're actually sending messages up to the brain to calm down. We're tending, but because that's, that's actually what's um, agitating the brain is these sort of dysregulated signals that are coming from the organs in the body. So as we work to regulate the body, then the mind can much more easily go, oh, okay, it's being taken care of. I, mind, didn't know what to do, but now somebody is teaching the body and me what to do, and it's a huge piece of regulation is working directly with the body, with those afferent signals that go to the brain, and then brain feels like it's getting support. Because in the child, and particularly if mothers are not present, are themselves dysregulated, mind doesn't learn what to do to regulate the body, and the body gets an imprint of dysregulation. And so when we talk about self-regulation, a person is kind of, yeah, those are nice words, but where do I start and how do I do it? If the diaphragm is frozen, then there's no movement in the enteric nervous system. Then you start to get a lot of t stagnancy and digestive issues. So that piece of without forcing the breath, you know, because if somebody has any trauma in these organs and you say to them, take a deep breath, you're actually, they won't know how to do it. And they'll do it, and basically what they'll do is they'll just further brace into the diaphragms. Like if you say to somebody, take a deep breath, and they go, <sighs> well, they've just frozen the diaphragms, you know, as opposed to when it's open and you say, you don't even need to say, take a deep breath. You just say, take an easy breath, and you see the flow of the movement go through the whole system. We're kind of going into what happens in the body underneath the character structure so that you have the tools to work with the different parts. And if you look at, for example, as we work with the diaphragm, what, what the connection style does with the diaphragm is that it's really pulled up and closed. And you can see then with the heart how much pressure and, and containment there is and how as a result the energy goes back and there's absolutely no support going on at the back. So when you see these, these body postures, you can start thinking what's happening with the support at the back, what's happening in the diaphragm, how much compression is there around the heart, how much, you know, 
how much compression in the belly. So I'm tr giving you the components that you can then apply to the character structure. The armoring, you know, these, these sort of rigidities are no longer connected to conscious mind. Like the person says, I want to let go, but my nervous system no longer has the pathways to send the message to let go. And this is one of the places where touch is really helpful and where then I suggest we go more in in-depth, pressing into those places so that we can start sending the signal, you know, in, in these muscles which are basically very deadened. It's like, here's a signal so the brain can remember, oh, that's where it is. So we start to bring more awareness of the proprioception, of in the interoception, and as the brain makes the connection, then it realizes how to let go. So we do have to rebuild some of the connections when the bracing patterns have been there for so long, sometimes, you know, since birth almost, so that the, p the mind or the internal system really doesn't know how to let it go. What are the events that are going on in the internal bodies? And talking with the, sh the, the heart, it's like if you think about when there are emotional, relational violations, what do you experience in your heart? It can be like a, a little explosion, like little shocks to the heart. Every time there's a break in connection, there's like a little shock to the heart. And when there's a, a, co a break in connection, we talk about a heartbreak. So that's as we enter that area of the heart, we're really dealing with shock, with developmental shock, which is hundreds of little shocks to the heart that happen in every time there's a relational misattunement. It's a little shock. They don't have to be very big, but there they are. And the whole system has to somehow organize around those little shocks. And when there are huge breaks, then there's a sense of a, of a shattering around the heart. 